Terribly bad manners, and we're so far away from that particular moment, uh, I couldn't even speculate about it. But my intentions are uh, to go back into the uh, private practice of law. That's uh, clearly what I'm presuming at the present moment. All right, thank you. I'd much. like to join you in Montana. That's what I'd really <laughs> well, like to we'd do. We'd both like to be there at some point. <laughs> Thanks very much, uh, former thank Montana you. Governor Mark Roscoe. Always getting a plug for his state. <laughs> Thanks for being with us tonight. <laughs> We're going to show you the map now, both electronically and otherwise. Uh, here's how we stand at this hour: 112 electoral votes for John Kerry, 156 for George Bush, red for the president, blue for John Kerry, and on the Rockefeller skating rink, the celebrated tourist attraction here in New York. That's how it, it is filling in, and no melting of the lines so far. It's going to be a long night, and down there it'll be a slightly chilly one, and it'll be even colder for whoever loses this election, obviously. I've reached that metaphor, but I stress that metaphor as far as I can. Let's go to a commercial now. As I say, we'll be back with more from Democracy Plaza. Decision 2004, right after this. We're back, Democracy Plaza, Decision 2004. The exit polls are telling us why people voted the way they did tonight. We're still awaiting the results in those key states, especially Pennsylvania, Ohio, Florida, and now into the upper Midwest, Michigan, Wisconsin, and Iowa coming up in the next half hour. We'll be going to the Southwest as well. Both candidates still short of the 270 needed. This is a big time chess game for the most powerful office in the world. What were the voters saying to us tonight as they came out of the polls, uh, Brian Williams? Let's go to Pennsylvania, Tom. You'll note still white on our board, no color assigned. It's a big battleground state. We've been talking about 21 electoral votes. In 2000, it went to Al Gore by a very slim margin. Now it's too early to make a call in the state, but our exit polls are telling us what Pennsylvanians were thinking about as they voted. President Bush drawing strong support from several groups there. Over 60% of gun owners, white Protestants, residents of the central and northern parts of Pennsylvania. Senator Kerry drew his strongest support from young voters, over 60%. Union households, also over 60 Black voters and Philadelphia residents, 84% each. Those four counties around Philly deliver one-fifth of the vote for the entire state. Now to the issues. Pennsylvania voters concerned with terrorism or moral values were especially likely to go with the president. 83% who said terrorism was the issue that mattered to them voted for the president. 81% of those who selected moral values as their primary concern went with George W. Bush. For John Kerry, the war in Iraq, health care, jobs, and the economy, those core issues in the central part of that state, those were the three that worked for him. Among Pennsylvania voters who said the war in Iraq was the most important issue, 75% voted for John Kerry, as did 83% who selected health care, 84% who said the economy and jobs most important to them. So some interesting internal numbers coming out of a crucial state tonight. Tom? Thanks, for, uh, Brian Williams. I'm just looking for at some numbers from Ohio. They are an uh, absolute reflection of what you were just reporting from the state of Ohio about why people voted the way they did and for which candidate. We've got a number of Senate races now that we're able to project winners in. Let's begin in the state of Arizona. One of the most popular political figures in the country, John McCain. Uh, no surprise, going back to the United States Senate, well, he, he'll be a burr under the saddle of both parties. And Sam Brownback, uh, a man who feels very strongly about refugee problems around the world, going back from the state of Kansas. Brian, Byron Morgan from the state of North Dakota, a state that goes big for him and big for George Bush. In New York, Chuck Schumer with $26 million in the bank and had a, more than a few advertisements on the air going back. Wisconsin, Russ Feingold, one of the authors of the Feingold-McCain campaign finance reform being returned. Blanche Lincoln from the state of Arkansas, that stays in the Democratic column. No pickup among uh, Democrats in the United States Senate in that run as well. Can we show you what's going on in the state of Kentucky? We've got a very tight, a a tight race down there. Jim Bunning, the Hall of Fame uh, baseball player, is virtually in a dead heat now with a man who was uh, essentially unknown in Kentucky politics until about six weeks ago. But Jim Bunning, who was a big time pitcher in both the National and the American League, uh, made a number of campaign gaps that I think that it's fair to say. Almost 90% of the vote is in. We've got a race that has 10,000 votes, less than that actually, between these two. Daniel Mangriardo, uh, 
was just unknown in Kentucky, Tim, until about six weeks ago. Yeah, Tom, it was a quite interesting to watch. There was a debate between the two candidates, and Senator Bunning did not return home for the debate. He went to the Republican National Committee headquarters in Washington, and it later learned he was using a teleprompter as a, a, a help, if you will, during the course of the debate. He also said he didn't read newspapers or watch television news and has created a big stir. The president landed in Cincinnati, Ohio the other day, invited Senator Bunning and his wife to greet him on Air Force One, hoping that photo op would be worth 10,000 votes. And maybe it is the margin of difference tonight. We don't know. Still 10% of the vote left the count. An amazingly too close to call race in Kentucky. That's a big surprise for the Republicans. One month ago, they thought they had a lock on that right. seat. Yeah. Well, we'll see how that turns out. We'll be watching that all night long. Joe Lockhart joined the... Uh, the John Kerry campaign this fall. He's a former presidential uh, press secretary to Bill Clinton. He joins us now. Uh, Joe, as you look at the map, where are the opportunities for Senator Kerry to get the 270 electoral votes that he needs? Well, I mean, obviously, all eyes are on Ohio and Florida. Uh, we think there's opportunity out in the southwest uh, with uh, New Mexico and Nevada. And obviously, the upper uh, Midwest with uh, Iowa, uh, Wisconsin, and Minnesota. What about Pennsylvania? The polls have been closed there for some time, and going into this evening, we were told that you were in pretty good shape in Pennsylvania. Yeah, I, th I think we were. I think we entered with, uh, with a pretty good lead. Uh, we had a very good get-out-the-vote operation in that state. We went back to that state over and over again. Uh, so I think uh, when all the votes are counted, we'll, we will have won Pennsylvania. Uh, Joe, you've always put it very straight with us. As you look at the map tonight, what are your principal concerns about the states apart from Florida and Ohio, where you may run into some difficulties? Well, you know, listen, I think the president uh, uh, made a tactical decision about a month ago. He, he went 20 days without going to Ohio and concentrated on the upper Midwest. Uh, we spent a lot of time and effort in Iowa, uh, Wisconsin, and Minnesota. We think we did enough. We think we'll win those states. Uh, but the president spent an awful lot of time and money in those states. So, I mean, those were, those were states that we had to work very hard for. All right, thanks very much, Joe Lockhart, with the Kerry campaign in Massachusetts. More from Democracy Plaza, Decision 2004, right after this. We're back at Democracy Plaza. The big question tonight, what's going on in the state of Ohio, also Pennsylvania, but Ohio is on everyone's mind. We want to go to our decision desk area now. Uh, NBC's Lester Holt is standing by there. Lester, what are they telling you? Well, Tom, an equal measure of good and bad news for the campaign's heart regarding Ohio. The decision desk says it could be a while because they have two models right now. One shows the race going President Bush's way. The other going Senator Kerry's way right now. Two distinct models showing very, very different results right now. It could be a while, Tom. All right, Lester, we also uh, want to remind our audience, of course, that there are people still voting in the state of Ohio. And we're not going to make a call in that state until everyone has finished their voting. They were in line at 7.30, and election officials decided that they could stay in line and vote on the touch screens that uh, Ann Thompson talked about earlier. Ohio has been, of course, one of the contentious states in terms of legal challenges to voting there, about whether you could have monitors in the polling places and so on. It's not going to get any bigger than Ohio tonight. With 20 electoral votes, it is a traditional Republican state. It is the home of the Taft family, and no Republican, you've heard this a hundred times, no Republican has ever been elected president without the state of Ohio. And George Bush did everything but put wheels under the White House and move it to Canton, Ohio, in the course of the last year and a half. More from Democracy Positive, Decision 2004, after this. You kept hearing all campaign long, this is going to be very close. It is proving to be that indeed on this election night. We now have 438 electoral votes outstanding. Polls have closed in states representing that number. Still not a president of the United States. Uh, th there are the columns on 30 Rockefeller Plaza. Uh, president Bush in red, John Kerry in blue. The outstanding states remain Pennsylvania, Ohio, Florida. And we're now moving into the upper Midwest as well. Uh, we're able to call the state of Louisiana, no surprise, that was always in the Bush column, nine electoral votes there. Also the state of Mississippi, as the South says, solid Republican, six electoral votes in the state of Mississippi. That's what the map looked like a moment ago as we color in 
of the neighboring states of Mississippi and Louisiana. George Bush goes up to 171. John Kerry to 112. Everyone thought going into the...